Welcome back to the Third World Podcast. I'm your host, Shaps, and I am joined by Caleb. Hello. I wish I came to you with better tidings, but alas, today we are going over a franchise that I despise very much. Okay. Yes, and a franchise that I'm fairly sure I'm going to be a fan of in the coming months. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, buddy, because mm-hmm. he's actually never seen this. He's never seen the movies. No. None of them? Zero of them? Never, never, okay. never. So, never seen any of them, but he also hasn't read any of the books, which, like, that doesn't surprise me, because most people are like, well, I, I haven't read the books, but I've seen the movies. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, and I was always like, I really feel like that and Lord of the Rings, I wanted those to be franchises I read first before I watch, which will ruin the movies, right? Because I love movies, but, like, I still, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, I feel like I'm missing out if I actually don't read these particular books. Mm-hmm. And up front... For Harry Potter, I am only spoiled on one thing. Okay. That that's it, and because you know the internet's the internet. Yeah. There's only well, technically two things, but like one of them was kind of obvious. There's only one other thing. I'm like, okay, that's spoiled for me. Okay. But I have no idea what the context is. I have no idea why it happens, how it happens. So I am almost 99% blind when it comes to this series. When did the first one come out? Do you know? The book or the movie? Let's say the book. Because like, that's actually not bad for the internet as far as... May have like, been before I was born? Yeah, because I was going to say the... Uh... 98 for me, so... Okay. Right, so that's really not bad, all things considered. Like, if you really think about it, let me no, look No, dude, like, again, like, it's so... I'm so that's why I'm so stoked, because I'm not spoiled on anything. Oh, that's great. So how... Was it a sin... For your household to have Harry Potter? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Even to mention it. He oh. who shall be named, that was Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me look this up. So the movie came out in 2001. Oh so I'm gosh. imagining... the book was probably way before that. Yeah. I, I don't know about way before that. I'd give it like a year or two. The 90s? Early 90s? Maybe. I right, Let's see here. 2001 fantasy film directed by Chris Columbus, which was the worst choice. Oh, Chris Columbus. Uh, he freaking did Home Alone. I'm aware. He wasn't... <laughs> he didn't do good for... Well, the, he did the first two Harry Potter films. Uh-huh. He... I think that was a detriment is when they started picking out better directors. So, I do not like the first two movies. Okay. Okay. They, the reason being is because like uh, you know how the first book there's just so much in it. And yeah. It's like it's the book actually doesn't jump around, but there's just so much context she mm-hmm. has to add. The movie, the first two movies don't do that well at all. They pick a plot line, then they forget about the plot line, and then they come back later, and then they. Like, oh, I guess we're still doing this plot line. It's just not paced very well, okay? But that yeah. could be with how the books are set up. That's unfortunate, because like, yeah. uh, immediately after I finished the book la- last night... You're like, I'm ready to see this movie. <laughs> I literally looked at the trailer for the movie. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I recognize every single thing that's happening in the trailer, which is... It's so crazy, like, because, like, I didn't get that from anywhere. I've never, again, never seen the movie. Yeah. So I'm looking at the movie, I'm like, oh, my God, I don't even know how, but I recognize everything that's happening. Yeah, exactly. Just because I read it, you know? Like, it was really cool. Um, So I'm like, I hope that's what the experience is like. I was wrong. The book came out in 97. So yeah. four years later, she got the... Now, okay, I will say, for, for first things first, a full disclaimer, I hate Harry Potter with a passion. <laughs> despise it for someone who it's read overrated. all the books and watched all the movies okay well here's the thing i didn't watch all the movies oh okay but i will say i there i couldn't talk trash about something if i didn't watch it or read sure it. so i figured the best thing to do this was really cool my, it was my mom's idea to read harry potter so she uh, same as you growing up harry potter was evil yeah. couldn't do it yeah i don't know how but over the years i had caught the movies mm-hmm. but i didn't watch them in order so i always got like okay oh. i guess he's old now so yeah. you know uh, so when the first one came out, we watched it one Christmas. I don't know why. And it's was, technically like a Christmas movie, or it's right. it's marketed. And like, it's Chris right? Columbus, so yeah, you know. <laughs> both Home Alone. Yeah, yeah, or just the first one. My bad. So anyway, no both of them. We I I caught the first one somehow, and I, I mean I liked it at the time, but I was like, what? It came out in 01. I watched it pretty much when it came out, so yeah, maybe 02. Yeah. So I was like seven. Like I I didn't really know. Mm-hmm. I never watched the second movie. I watched the third movie. My dad was a truck driver, and then we would watch it uh, at the some rest stops had in theater in house theaters, mm-hmm. which were kind of cool. So we watched the third one. That's also how I watched the fourth one. Yeah, didn't watch any of them after that. Okay, so I watched them all out of order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just I'm way I'm way out of the loop here on these Harry Potter things. Or I was. 2017, my mom texted me, hey, do you want to read the Harry Potter movies? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, weren't these evil? You know, right, uh, yeah. w- one time my dad got me a Harry Potter costume for Halloween. I had to get rid of it, you know? Yeah. So I, I had the toy wand. I pretended it was a really long pipe. 
you know, when I was a kid. Like, oh, uh, so, yeah. so like, yeah, for context for me, literally, I was, it was so bad. Even freaking Narnia was too butch. Well, no it was like, I mean, like, eventually, like, my yeah. parents were like, oh, actually, he's a Christian author. But, yeah. like, Lord of the Rings, it was the same thing. There right. was witches and wizards, and we're not doing that right. in this household. So, That's yeah. crazy, because uh, the first, or I think it was the first book. It was not the first movie, chronologically, mm. but Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I believe that's the first book. Uh, it has so much dark magic in it. I know. I'd say more so than almost the first. Well, Harry it Potter has book. little <laughs> little representation of Satan. So, yeah, like, I was gonna say, like, I, I I would honestly argue that the first Narnia book is worse than this one as far <laughs> as dark magic. Like, they talk about it, but you don't ever actually like. Well, see okay, it. being someone from New Orleans, where like witches and voodoo and all that was like so prominent. Yeah. When you look at you know Hogwarts School of Witch Witchcraft and Wizardry, it's like, oh my God, they're gonna teach our kids how to do a seance like that. Yeah. Right. You know. They sell Ouija boards at Walmart in the kids' Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, yeah. if anything, we should be getting at Walmart for that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, so you said before you wanted to read this before you watch the movies. Yes, okay, same so thing with Lord of the Rings. I'm like, what do you want to do wanna... with the movies? Do you want to watch those? I do, yeah. because I'm really excited. Because I am really just want to see, again, what I read, like visualize. You know, like because I can visualize it myself, but yeah. I know there's movies, so I know there's like... It feels feels weird. It's almost like there's a right way to think about everything. Because, like, I know what the characters look like. So when I read about Hagrid, I knew what Hagrid looked like in the movie. So that's where I pictured him. I know what Harry Potter looked like. I didn't really know what Professor Quirrell looked like. I didn't know... um, I kind of knew what Quidditch was. You know, didn't really kind of... I had to piece it together a little bit. But we'll there's a lot of parts, you we'll know, that was kind Quidditch, of mixed match. I promise you. <laughs> Wait, what? We'll get to Quidditch. Okay. Don't you worry, oh, buddy. God. <laughs> but no, um, it was just, like, really exciting. And um, I think my... Just real quick, my biggest takeaway was that I really wish I could have read this as a kid. Because, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I would have loved it that much more. I'm very happy I didn't read these as a kid because I definitely would have liked them. And now as an adult... <laughs> yeah, happy? Yeah. No, 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 yeah. So Dude, now as I an adult, have, I can come back and I like, would yeah, have this is... loved this stuff. Like, um, like just... Same? Again, because, yeah, it is a kid's book. I mean, this particular one is, at least. And, like, the story is yeah. relatively simple, but, like... It has elements of mystery, you know, it has adventure, it has a lot of dark elements, which is like, again, a stuff I would have eaten up as a kid, because I loved reading, like, Goosebumps and stuff growing yeah. up, like, and, like, you know, exploring things, you know, and just using your imagination, like, a lot of this is super imaginative, and yeah. I loved her, uh, J.K. Rowling's just ability to somehow make the, such an intricate world, you know, in a that's acceptable for children, you know, right. but also can be... a accepted by adults later on yeah. like i'm a, i'm cool with it you so, know so i guess we can uh so first disclaimer i hate harry potter second disclaimer full spoilers okay if you have yes. not read the books if you have not watched the movies don't watch this episode i know that's super critical of me but like i again keep in mind i have not ever had anyone to talk to about this yeah. stuff so it's like yeah i won't talk about well, it well it's like a whole new world now yeah i know like now i could I can actually talk about why I don't like it like, to people because I know, I've read the books and they're like, well, well, in the movie it was more clear. Yeah, you now, have like that. Al- you movie. have that ultimate trump card. You're yeah, like, no, I'm superior. Yeah, I've read, I've read the book. It's and like I hated people it. who read like the entire One Piece manga. Yeah. Like, it's just- yeah. So those are the first two disclaimers, okay? And then we'll get. I, I, there's no more disclaimers really, but like, well, well really? I guess we can get yeah. to what. I guess we can get into it. I will start off saying on this book, mm. this book in particular, it's not that bad. Okay, like okay. It, I, yeah, I actually don't mind this book. Okay, her, mm. my problems with her. There's a couple things in this book where it's like it's not that big of a deal. It, mm. It's there, but it's not like the worst thing ever. Yeah. But later on, when she's like, "Oh shoot, we need to r- ramp up the stakes here," mm. she she's not good at. There that. was only <laughs> there was only one or one minor issue and one kind of bigger issue I had yeah. actually with the right. story, but then I had to. It kind of ties yeah. in with being a kid's book, but yeah. Right. There and, were two and, things. And one thing I don't like in this book, she doesn't do again. She doesn't make this Okay, mistake. gotcha. So it's like, you know, this book has flaws, but it is a kid's book. Mm. And it's actually, it's really not that bad. Mm. Like, it, 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 honestly, like I enjoyed it, especially this time. So I was talking with a friend of mine the other day. And what I did realize was like, uh, now as a content creator, okay... Uh, now, granted, this isn't the hardest media for me to do, yeah. but we, when I edit these, this is hard to edit, and mm-hmm. sometimes I got to hear myself like, "Oh, I said something really cringy that I hate." Or but, you have to cut out good stuff because, yeah, like, yeah. and it's like time it's, constraints, or it's hard. Yeah, like you mess something up, mm-hmm. and it's like, "Oh, that would have been great," but yeah, but now it's gone. Yeah, now it's gone. So oh, I feel um, the same way, yeah. reading this a second time, I'm reading like, okay, 
from one content creator to another. Now it's mm-hmm. again different league. I could never write a book. Okay, yeah. so I will say that. Good on her for writing a book. Like I could never do that. So I can't. I'm a little bit less angry reading through this as I was the first time because I'd yeah. never created anything myself. Sure. Now going through as an actual creator, I'm like, okay. This is hard to do. Like yeah. putting all your thoughts together, um, putting it coherently, taking mm-hmm. real criticism from people. Like yeah. she, she I, I guarantee you, this version we read was not the first one she turned to the publisher. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I know people that are writers too. Like it's hard. Those are hard things. I've I've written. You know I mean, mean, I've never published anything, but I've written quite uh, quite a few things, and I also do a lot of D and D. So like that requires a lot of writing. And yeah, yeah. There's like. Some stuff yeah. flops on its face, and mm-hmm. some of it actually reads really fun. well. Yeah, um, it's hit or miss a lot of the time. But like, yeah, I mean, okay, let's just both can we just both agree? Like, there's a reason why it's so popular. Like, yes. there is obviously talent here, and I'll, and I'll get to why because mm-hmm. I, I think there there is a good reason why mm-hmm. this has t- taken off. Okay, <laughs> and if I was a writer, I would be ecstatic, even if my book sucked. If someone want to make a movie out of it, I'd be like, yeah. heck yeah, let's go. So yeah. real quick, let's go a little bit more backstory for me. I am partially dyslexic, so it's actually kind of hard for me to read mm-hmm. like fast. I got like a two. He gave me like a two week deadline, so I'm like, oh god, yeah. this is sweating. No, no one sweating he agreed. Bullets. Okay, so I got for, he could have yeah. said no, but I said let's do it. Yeah, he's like sure. Yeah, uh, I, I I do appreciate you cr- uh, crunching it. It was also time. during a very yeah. very time consuming time at work, so I'm like. Oh god! So I literally I had like yesterday I had probably like four hours left, and yeah. um, I was like, oh my god! And I had D and D later, and I was like, oh my god, how am I gonna fit it? I stayed up till like three a.m. listening to this thing. Yeah. And I actually, listen, yeah. So I used Audible for the first time. I didn't like the idea of Audible books because I'm like, that's kind of cheating. I think you should really read. You know, that's where you get a lot of information. But it helped me get through it. I don't think I would have been able to read it, you know, yeah. all without it. It just again it. I don't have really bad dyslexia. It's just like it slows me down so much. Yeah, I do appreciate you crunching this in about two weeks, maybe a little bit less. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. audience, he put the work in for this. Mm-hmm. Now, now from here on out, we're gonna try to do every month. Yeah, it'll be a lot easier yeah, for me. It, that's that's plenty of time. The the, ne- the next two books are real simple. Yeah, okay? so I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, so let's let's yeah. let's start off with it. I mean, like, how do you want to talk about it? like kind of beat for beat or um, let's like, talk about the stuff I like. Okay, and then sure. we can talk about stuff I don't like. Now, again, with this book, there's not a lot that I actually dislike. Mm-hmm. There, there's a little bit, and I said like, and, and I was trying to catch some things reading it through. As I was reading through this time, I was trying to catch things. I was like, okay, that was a problem for me in later books, mm-hmm. so I took note of it now to see like, okay, here's an example, and we can get to it like later, sure. and, and it'll it'll make it more clear mm-hmm. whenever we do this again. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, for what I do like, world building. And I think oh, yeah. you're going to agree with this. World building, she is very, very good at. Mm-hmm. Okay, like something simple, like going to pick out his robes, going to pick out his wand. Like each thing was like a really cool process. Like yeah. to go get a wand, there's like a really cool, I, I'm going to say wand salesman because I already mm-hmm. forgot, unless you remember better than me. But there, the guy that sells him the wand, like he's like, he's got all this personality. He's like, right. oh, this one sucks. Now this one. And he's ha- And it's really cool is because like he's happy to serve Harry all these different ones, even though he's doing all this work, taking out all these boxes. It felt really real because they yeah. even described like, oh, all the rich people buy this one, but yeah. it, it just looks flashy. It's not actually yeah. like useful. I'm right. like, it's weird. It's jarring and weird at first because I didn't actually know what time period this took place in. Right. I knew it was a little bit, I thought it was like 1950s, 60s. I knew it was a little bit later than the 1800s. I'm like, holy crap, this is like 2000s because they have like computers. They have like, well, you know, like motorcycles and stuff. I'm like, this is really weird. So like when they're talking about wands and they're saying, well, what's what's his wand or not his broom? His broom. What's it called again? The um something oh, three thousand yeah, or two thousand. Yeah. And it gets more confusing in the third book. Okay, good. So. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, that's a really it's really yeah. weird. But I'm like, no one else has done that. So right, I'm exactly. also very intrigued by it. Yeah. And she did. Yeah, you're right. Did a really good job of just normalizing it. Yeah. To the point where it actually feels like this could be a real thing. Yeah. I think that's what you know. A lot of kids or people you know growing up with Harry Potter say like, I wish it was real. I wish it was yeah, real because exactly. it feels so real. Right. So yeah, good on her. Yeah, I mean the the cauldron, <laughs> the flying cauldron. Mm-hmm. What's the place he goes to to go do all the shopping? I forget. Oh, man, I'm still. I'm not better. I, I just read the thing, and I'm not good with the names. I'm still learning the names. Diag- Diagon Alley. Uh, Diagon Alley. D- Diagon Alley. Diagon. Okay, Diagon. Diagon. Diagon Alley. <laughs> He goes there, and every shop he goes to is really cool. Yep. All the food's really cool. Mm-hmm. Chocolate frogs, butter beers. Yeah, it's just like every, every flavor beans. I love the idea. You open up a chocolate frog, and there's a wizard card in there. And yeah. the fact that all pictures move. Yeah. And I loved it 
when Ron was confused by Harry's confusion when Harry was like, wait, why did the picture move? And he's yeah. like, your pictures don't move. Right, like, exactly. It's like, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. It's, so yeah, it's like George Lucas levels of just like really, creativity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, and I'm honestly, her writing flaws don't really come out till later. There's <laughs> mm-hmm. a little bit in the next book and that I can't wait to talk about that because actually I will say the second book is probably one of my more favorite books. Yeah. Uh, but re- rereading this one, I was like, this one, this one's got good mm. stuff too. Like the 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 Sorting Hat. How'd you like the Sorting Hat chapter? Loved it. That was good. I loved. I, mean, I love so the how the idea that of the houses creative. is really cool. Yeah, I could never think of that. You yeah, know I mean, like that's yeah. really cool. And then like, okay, how do you make one house really like the obvious bad house, but also make it to where? That was so it's dumb. Like, it's like it's, it's, but like yeah, it's kind of hard. That's yeah. another hard part. It's like okay, this is obviously the evil house, like yeah, very bad evil house. I know, but everyone has to act like they're not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so okay, you brought that up, and before I forget, yeah, why why did Slytherin not been like, disbanded as well, a like, house? <laughs> well, the thing is, so I can't. I I almost like feel sorry for them because like. That's what they're set up to be. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you put an evil snake as your head? Like, just like... Bro, okay. Uh, I love Dumbledore. Uh, the first, oh, he's so cool. The first, I think all the books, with the exception of like the later ones, mm-hmm. the end of the book... They... <laughs> I hope he doesn't lose his personality. I no, love... oh, no, no, yeah. no. Not at all. But every, it's funny. And this, I don't know if this is a spoiler for you or not. Mm-hmm. I just think like it's funny. At the end of every book, they, he sits down with Dumbledore and Dumbledore is, okay, here's what happened. <laughs> You know, here's what you learned today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, so you know how you were confused. Let me just tell you what what that was. All right, so the the way this book ends, that's how it goes. But okay, Dumbledore, Dumbledore being the all knowing, all powerful mm. wizard, it's very clear he knows stuff that nobody else does. Yeah. Why is Slytherin still a house? Let me be real with you. Like they're evil. <laughs> and he he it's even in their like motto. <laughs> he even has information he intentionally yeah. keeps from Harry. He's like, I'm keeping this from you because yeah. it's not time. Like he is the ultimate all knowing. But yeah. like. Right. Okay, I kind of know what happens with Slytherin later on in the books. Like, sure. and there's freaking, you know, first of all, I didn't even realize Voldemort would show up in this book. I, I thought he was like, okay, this is gonna be the villain that's like way okay. later. So he's mentioned a bunch of times, yeah. and he actually shows up like almost yeah. in a physical, semi-physical yeah. form. Like, I was not expecting. Uh, that. Let me get that. That's gonna be problem number two, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna save that for later. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm gonna talk. About... I have a feeling she had an idea for dumb or for Voldemort that probably changes to something else later on. Okay, well, I won't I, tell you. So, that's the, that's my theory. We're going to talk about this book. <laughs> yeah, sure. For this that, book? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Going from the beginning, things I like re- noticed um, going forward, like, it doesn't shy away from death, which I like. You know, it's, again, those sort of like the dark elements. Like, they talk about, like, a bunch of people dying, you know, because of Voldemort. One little thing, I'm like, okay, kid's book, right? One little thing I would notice, I was like, okay, like, Voldemort, he's, like, killing all these wizards, right? Feels like this is, again, this is what the time period threw me off. It'd be so much more efficient if he just started using guns. I'm not. I know I'm not the first person to point that out, but like, yeah, right. He's like, okay, apparently, like killing people is like a big no-no with these wizards. But like, Voldemort's the one who's like, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna start killing all these wizards. I'm like, okay, yeah. sweet. But like, he uses his wand, for instance. <laughs> and I don't know. It just seems well, kind of weird because Voldemort they don't. Voldemort like... hates muggles. Muggles being right. humans. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. him using a gun, and they don't ever address this. Obviously, I'm, I'm making something sure. up here. I, I fully acknowledge. I call people out for this all the time who mm. make stuff up to fill in the plot holes. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates muggles to the point where, honestly, like if you if later. If you like read into his personality, he probably wouldn't even. He use... wouldn't even acknowledge anything a muggle makes. If they meant, I mean, like yeah. I get what you're saying. If yeah. they mentioned that, I would totally buy that. And, yeah, and I, I get that. But like, mm-hmm. uh, if you ever listen to him talk at some point in the series, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> <laughs> wink. Um, <laughs> just, just like he he hates muggles to the point where him using one of their contraptions to do what he can do as a powerful wizard, that he wouldn't. Sense. He wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, he never sits there and looks at the camera and says, yeah. "I don't use guns because <laughs> you know." I mean. But that sounds like a true that's fan. A, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's that, he I mean, that's a that's an interesting theory. I like that. Um, I fully acknowledge I'm making this up. Yeah. Okay. Like <laughs> they, they don't address it in the book. I yes. thought I was gonna have a big problem with Harry Potter being a prodigy, but they deal with it kind of interesting because like all the kids immediately know who he is. Yeah. He doesn't even know who he is, which is another thing you can kind of read into. Uh, I think there's a lot more deeper message there because again, he just shows up in this world. He's no idea what anything yeah. is, and everyone knows who he is. Mm-hmm. His whole life story. And that's been done before um, but I also like how it doesn't stay because there's later on he makes a big mistake and it costs his house like 150 points right. and then everyone like turns on him right. I wasn't expecting that that was yeah. pretty cool yeah. I was like oh wow there's actually like consequences and he's not just gonna be forgiven for everything because he's 
the prodigy, right? Whoa. Knowing what I know about child abuse, like mm. the, the way he grows up, he's like, he's forced in a little closet under the stairs. Right. Yeah. Now, Dumbledore mentions, like, I don't want him to grow up with a big head. Yeah. Thinking like, oh, he, he's the son of a powerful wizard mm. couple that took out the greatest evil. Yeah. But like knowing what I know about child abuse, like, this is sad. Like, yeah, yeah. Part, yeah like he, there's no way he has any social skills. Mm -hmm. um, I really felt for him this time around, knowing what I know about child abuse and the classes I've taken in college. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, I, I was a lot more empathetic this time. Sure. My biggest flaw with this series is Harry Potter himself, himself. the character. Okay, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, he was yeah. definitely. But I was feeling for him this time around. Sure. And the stuff I have problems with him are a problem later. Mm -hmm. Where it, where it's in this book, they're fine because like he goes from didn't know wizards were a thing to mm -hmm. now he he's the most powerful wizard of them all so they say right um he's the most powerful wizard ever and he how's he supposed to take all that in sure you know what i mean like and I then get he that. gets freaking like yeah i mean like yeah he did kind of beat uh spoilers but professor coral like but like also kind of got curb stomped at the same time so right. like he didn't just you yeah. know oh my god instantly void you know, the villain away but yeah um another thing okay one little problem i had was the incompetency of some of the professors okay um well okay you brought that up mm -hmm. uh hagrid i love hagrid great character i love she's good at writing accents i've noticed that too yeah. same thing with george R. R. martin in game of thrones mm -hmm. really good at writing accents where you know what they're saying but you also know what type of accent he's yeah, speaking exactly. with okay really good the, the the problem i have is like there's a point in the forbidden forest where he's like all right guys we're hunting werewolves this is the most dangerous place ever we're gonna split up i'm gonna take this crossbow and <laughs> And, I'm and like, you guys yeah. go by that yourself. That was so dumb. And I there was, was like, one Hagrid. point, like, when they, okay, I also didn't really buy the scene where Harry was talking to Hagrid, and he's like, hey, when you buy when you bought that dragon, or when you won that dragon egg, yeah. what did you exactly say to the man? Hagrid's like, oh, well, I told him this and that yeah. and this. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, my God. Yeah. Well, that doesn't get better later on. I'm like, <laughs> Hagrid, I didn't think Hagrid was, like, that stupid. Right. And I'm no, like, well, oh, okay, so the movie, the movie adaptation... It's even dumber. Really? Like it, it's it's like because again they they couldn't they had so many plot lines to go through. Yeah. So where he says like four times, oh I probably shouldn't have said that. It's like I was oh like, dude, gosh, come on, dude, Hagrid. That's such, come that's on, so Hagrid. Stupid. So for no reason, and like, these twelve year old kids yeah. figured out what you couldn't like. All right, oh, I know. That's stupid. Uh, yeah, I agree. So um, I originally I thought the problem I had with this was pacing. It's mm -hmm. actually not pacing. So just this book only. Just this book. Yeah. She transitions a few scenes very weird. Uh -huh. I don't know if you picked up on this one. So I'm going to go, sorry, 224 mm. in the book because oh, I don't boy. have it off the top of my head. Yeah. Page 224. Let me get there. Give me a sec. Um, okay, this is right after the big Quidditch match. Okay. And that for context, this is the one that Snape uh, refereed. Okay. The second one, then. Yeah, yeah the second Quidditch match. Mm -hmm. The big Quidditch match. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we know spoilers. Snape was refereeing because he was trying to protect Harry from Quarrel. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Snape's the best character, by the way. Honestly, okay, yeah. I have something to say about him later. Yeah, so just let me get to this point. Uh, this is after Harry wins. Okay, he wins. Uh, this chapter is called Nicholas Flannel, Chapter Thirteen. She does this one other time in the book that I'm about to read, mm -hmm. but I couldn't find it. But I, I remember this one very specifically. So after he wins, he goes back to the broom shed. Harry had reached the shed. He leaned against the wooden door and looked up at Hogwarts with windows glowing red in the setting sun. Mm -hmm. Gryffindor in the lead. He'd done it. He'd shown Snape. And speaking of Snape, a hooded <laughs> figure came swiftly down to the front side. I was like, come on. But like, that was so weird. <laughs> that was dumb. She does that twice in this book. Just yeah. a weird transition. But she doesn't do it again later on. I okay, remember, so she probably learned from it. Yeah. When I first read that, I was I got How pissed. do I transition? How yeah. Do I transition? Uh, well, speaking of him, he just, he, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Weird. Yeah. That that that's my that's one of my major flaws with this book is mm. just like she she can't transition very well sometimes, sure. uh, but not all the time. A lot of times, let me see if I can find it. Also, another criticism I have mm. is action. Mm. Now, again, this isn't a problem really in this book because there's not a lot of action. Yeah, but I think the mystery really carried it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, like I said, the world. Like anytime Harry interacted with something new. Oh yeah. Like that was cool. Like mm -hmm. you know, it was something creative. And I love the idea of the ghost. Yeah. Um, how like sometimes they'll help you out. Sometimes they'll screw you over. Mm -hmm. And like they all have different personalities and names and titles and stories. Like it's really good. All right. Here we go. Quidditch. Let's see. Is this the chapter that he goes and flies a broom the first time? It's a really simple interaction where Malfoy takes the broom. 
and he takes what the ball from mm-hmm. Neville. Yep. Well, yeah. Neville dropped it, and then Malfoy, Malfoy found it, and Harry's it like, "Give it okay, back." Okay, so th- there's a simple transaction where Harry starts chasing after him. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. And they go up in the air. She fumbles that paragraph poorly. Like it's like it should be a simple. He dropped the ball. And he's like, "Catch Harry!" And then he mm-hmm. catches it. Harry saw, as though in slow motion, the ball rise up in the air and then start to fall. He leaned forward and pointed his broom handle down. Next second, he was gathering speed in a steep dive, racing the ball. Wind whistled in his ears, mingled with the screams of people watching. He stretched out his hand. A foot from the ground, he caught it, just in time to pull his broom straight. And he toppled gently onto the grass with the Renum brawl clutched safely in his fist. That's a really long paragraph to describe how he's like, catch then, and then he catches it. And it, like it's, it's not that engaging. You think it's like padding? Yeah, in a mm-hmm. sense, or or like she just doesn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. It's not so much padding because like, because uh, like later on, especially with like the more action oriented books, mm-hmm. like she's trying to make it engaging, but she's she's just she's not good at it. And it's like I feel like as the books go on, she tries different things to like see if it works, and it doesn't. It never works. But like a simple transaction of like Malfoy's like here catch this and then he's like oh you know and catches it. She she went into the, all these unnecessary details and it's like it's just not that interesting. Mm-hmm. It, and it's no wonder the first couple books she doesn't even try to have action. Sure. But as the as the stakes get higher, there's just no way you can avoid it. Plus, like she comes up with all these really cool spells mm-hmm. and it's like well they got to use it they got to fight right. you know what I mean so that's what ends up happening. But so yeah, yeah. that's actually I mean like. Yeah. Yeah. Aside from the action, like I think, really, the mystery is what drove yes. drove this book. Um, it was a pretty good mystery for you know for a kids book. Like I was, I, I was interested. Like I knew Snape wasn't going to be a bad guy, but I'm like, but who would be? I wasn't seeing really. Yeah. I didn't think Coral would be, but um, right. Cool so, reveal, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so you thought good reveal then. I was like, that's cool. And then I love how he references back. Oh my god, I saw him in the Goblin store way back when. I was like, oh, that's what he was doing. I'm right. like, that's really cool. Like. And then the fact that, oh, he was the first one to come and uh, announce that the troll was released. I'm like, oh, my God. like That's good callbacks. Like, I like that. So it, right. was, a, it yeah. was good. It was really well done. Yeah. Um, so a criticism I have with her writing is it does feel like she makes stuff up as she goes along. Mm-hmm. Which, just keep that in the back of your mind as we talk about later books. Just okay. keep that. She makes up stuff as we go along. It's which not... is technically a form of writing. Uh, for sure. It can be good, it can be um, bad. But in this, in, in this book, she, the, some of the stuff she lays down, I was mm-hmm. kind of like, okay, cool. Like She, she knows this is going to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. A problem I have, and it's not, again, not a big deal in this book. Yeah. Because Harry Potter is so new to everything. What spell did he cast this book? Like Guardian Meliosa, I think. And that's it? That's it. Okay, his friends do all the work when it comes to problem solving. Like yeah. the, the 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 potion room, the chess set. He had no hand in. He's just there smiling. Like and he oh, got man. more points than Neville. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, that was like bull. That was bull crap. <laughs> yeah. Like okay, so it's one thing you're gonna notice in all these books is Harry never ever does anything himself. It's all interesting. You notice how powerful like Hermione is. Mm-hmm. She's ridiculously like smart. She knows all the spells. Anytime they hit like a little hiccup. She's like, oh, I know the counter, you know, just cast this, and then boom. Like, In reality, it. that's yeah. all you need to survive in this world. Right. It's like to be a very successful just to know everything. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, she's the only character that knows everything. Each mm-hmm. teacher is like proficient in one thing, except Snape, but we'll get to that in later books. Mm-hmm. But yeah, everyone's like fitted to teach like one subject, whereas mm-hmm. Hermione, she's like OP. Like she right. knows everything already, you know, right out the gate. But a problem I have with Harry is like, especially later on in the books, is justifiable in this one. But he doesn't know any spells. He doesn't ever cast anything himself. So he's a bit of like a... What's a male Mary Sue? Um, well, I would... A Mary Sue is someone who's good at everything. But he's he not, doesn't even do it. He's anything. not good at anything. <laughs> like, he's... Well, no, except for just deflecting evil. <laughs> right. Like, with Voldemort, you know, yeah. as a baby. So, like, that part I was like, okay... Again, he didn't do that. His mom did it. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> All right, I, I just want you to point. Interesting, yeah, interesting. So let's go through these books later and like just. Keep, no, I'm glad you pointed that out because I'll definitely mind. be thinking about that yeah. because um yeah I noticed that but I was like okay it's the first book right keep just keep he's that only mind. got one spell whatever it's keep first that in mind as you keep reading. Uh, <laughs> what were the two other things? Um, yeah, I wanted to save Snape for last because oh my gosh like you said I, Snape. I have a lot of things to say. Oh about him. cool. Uh, okay, let's talk about Voldemort. Can we talk about Voldemort? Voldemort, yeah. The big bad. The ultimate evil. So evil they won't even say his name. Dude, I love the he idea died. of him 
twice in this book. Okay. <laughs> the second time was kind of stupid, but I was like, I love the idea of setting up like this is so intriguing. How did the most powerful wizard die? Right. He's still alive because he never fully lived or something. I was like, those are some great lines. I'm like, just like, oh, that's really cool stuff. Well, I hope you don't want an explanation anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm probably because she hasn't thought of it yet. Right. But like, right. yeah, I'm like, um, I also know he doesn't have a nose. So like, why does he have a nose? Now? Or it's not even noted, mentioned, but still. We'll she get did to... say in the book he has like little snake slits for a nose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whenever but, um... whenever a Quarrel takes his turban off the first time, it's like ah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But sure. yeah, um, it was just it was really interesting how like they built him up as like the ultimate villain who almost took over the world. Somehow he died, you know, yes. or like has lost all his power to Harry. Like, yeah. okay, what is the connection there? Yeah. Again, a lot of things got settled really quickly, way quicker than I thought. I didn't think we'd see Voldemort for like three books, right. even hear about him. But they talk about him the entire time. Yeah. And even Dumbledore at the very end, um, what did he say uh, to Harry? I mean, he basically said he straight up just has no form right now. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. Yeah. I thought that's okay. Like, so interesting. I, I pictured so a... It's kind of like Sauron in a way. Sure. If I, I don't know much about Sauron. Yeah, but like, I don't know why you're of, using that reference. But, kind of like, <laughs> but to my not correct me if I'm wrong, he's like basically formless right but he has presence everywhere yes, yes, he has yes, followers yes. like to do his bidding mm. um i like the idea of it sets up good tension where you have his former followers convert back to hogwarts and they're like oh my yeah. god we're under a spell but actually some of them might just be one thing i love spies i'm like that's cool one thing i love this is part of the world world building mm-hmm. everyone who followed voldemort the first time is a super interesting character because yeah. you don't know are they did were they under a spell did they choose to follow him? Did they and, see and him they go too too yeah. far? And did they're they, like, yeah. oh, no. Or don't. did they pretend to be under his curse? Like, that's really interesting. Yeah. And that's something that gets ramped up every book. That's good. And where, where you're like, okay, who's who? You know what I mean? Like, who's mm. with us? Who's not with us? Okay. Yeah. That, that is very well set up in this one. It's very intriguing. And that carries over, especially into the next book. Yeah. But my problem with Voldemort in this book is he's like... Okay, it was okay the first time. He's mm-hmm. got the, this big buildup. He's the most big evil villain. Oh my gosh! Like, how do we beat Voldemort? Let's Harry beat him and twice. then they kind of treat him in a. They kind of treat him as like a B plot D and D side. Quest. I'll get you again one day. Well, like a, a side quest where it's like, mm-hmm. uh, ha! I got this magical artifact that's going to unleash the ultimate evil and you just destroy the artifact. It's like, and, oh no! Yeah, foiled uh, again I'll by children. Back. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And basically, oh, that's yeah. what I was about to say. Yeah. Dumbledore basically said that he was conquered by the power of love. I'm like. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> what kind of that, what spell I was is that? waiting? Like okay. Again, I thought the reason for his deflection or the reason he got he died the first time. I thought that was gonna be saved yeah. for the very end or something. Yeah. Like of the series, but they straight up just say, "Oh, it's because of love." He doesn't understand love. Like it's the yeah. one magic he doesn't under. <sighs> Okay, so why isn't everybody casting a love spell on each other? <laughs> and now they're everyone. Why isn't everyone making out? You yeah, know, just exactly. like why isn't everyone invincible? Okay, I, that was um, that was kind of that's weird. dumb. <laughs> love, like really, that was like that's the, the most kids' way you thing. Gone. You yes. like, I'm like, okay, like yeah. I was on board, and yeah. I don't know if that gets retconned or anything, but not like, retconned. She dresses it, but uh, the fact that it exists really annoys me. <laughs> that is really stupid. Yeah, like that There's felt nobody... like you only wanted to write this one book, and that's it. Like, yeah. But no, obviously she wanted to write more. Right. Um, but oh, I don't think she really knew what to do with Voldemort. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think she knows what to do with him probably until the very end. Um, <laughs> is what I'm gathering. Yeah. yeah. Which is which is sad. But that's why you have... It doesn't matter too much to me because there's so many other interesting characters. Exactly. So, exactly. And okay. as we go on, mm-hmm. like um, I think there's some characters that would have been way more powerful than Voldemort. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. understand why he's the most powerful one when mm-hmm. he doesn't do anything. Right. Yeah. You know? But again, we'll, I'll, I'll bring that up again as we keep reading. But, but to yeah. To really talk about, okay, I want to talk about two character moments. Let's do it. One, Hagrid. I thought I was going to hate him just seeing his incompetence. But then the scene with the dragon, when he gave away the dragon, there's a problem. I have a problem I have, and it's something I really like about the scene. Okay. First problem I have, I hate when the kids act like adults for right. the adults. I, I never like that in writing. I always think, if I was a kid, I wouldn't want to give up a freaking dragon. Yeah. I would want to find a way, if I was a real kid, you know, in that moment, 
I want to find a way to keep the dragon. I wouldn't be like, now Hagrid, you know it's not responsible of you. Yeah. Like that felt kind of weak. Right. But then to see Hagrid's connection with this thing, and then mm-hmm. it calls back to his, you know, there's a lot of like callbacks. You know, I love how like, oh, he mentioned that from the very beginning. He's yeah. always wanted a dragon. Like, yeah. So it kind of brings that kid out of him. Yeah. I'm like, that's really sad. And when he gave up the dragon, he's like, I, I left him his teddy bear. When well, the, the, so he wouldn't get lonely. I'm like, I almost cried yeah. i was like that's so and, sad and the part where ron gets bitten by the the dragon he's like he's all he's, swollen he's like what'd you do yeah, what, like, why did you piss off the yeah why'd you piss him off like, <laughs> he's been fine with me all day like, so like that's yeah. where i'm like okay i'm down with Hagrid. yeah like yeah he, i love Hagrid. i love Hagrid yeah. so much and like the way he describes uh holding harry in the palm of, like he's like when you when you were a kid you were this big in my hand you know he's like, like oh. the ultimate uncle yeah, like aloof exactly. uncle and like i'm really interested they set up that he did something really horrible. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, that's right. that's really good. He Why covers is, it up. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy, yeah. I really hope that's good. Yeah, and you see you see mm. bits of it in this one uh, where he's like hiding the dragon. Like it's yeah, illegal. Yeah, yeah. You cannot mm-hmm. have a dragon. And he's like, you know, well, you can't keep it here, Hagrid. And he's like, what, you know? And he's like, what? They, they have to convince him to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Like it's like he has a big heart that yeah. just gets him into trouble sometimes. Yeah. So it's like, what could he have possibly done? Right. So and he was only a third year. It's like, oh, it's crazy. But he's also like pretty powerful, but not like yeah. As, you he's know. not a powerful. I don't. Th- I don't remember exactly. I don't think he's a wizard. Wizard. He's not a wizard because he never graduated. Exactly. <laughs> so, but also, um, yeah, Dumbledore trusts him more than pretty much everyone. Yeah. Which is on uh, maybe that is that because he's not officially part of Hogwarts, or is that because there's a deeper reason there? I'm like, well, he Dumbledore knows his people so yeah. he trust if he trusts you then he trusts you he has a good reason mm-hmm. like the all-knowing like uh okay so it's very clear that i know you want to talk about snape but mm-hmm. like let's touch on it yeah it's very clear that snape hates harry we yes. don't know exactly why but he trusts snape which mm-hmm. is weird because he's like right he he's trying to protect harry at all costs but so he assigns harry to snape who yeah. hates him but he but he trusts snape somehow right to where it carries over past the hatred he had. Like, he just knows it'll work itself out. Because... And you think it's going to be one of those stupid things where, like, yeah. oh, my God, can't you see Snape's evil? No, no, of course he's not. Right. And, like, turns out Harry didn't know what he's talking about. Right, exactly. He judged him way too quickly. Exactly. But um, to be fair, everyone judges the Slytherins. Right. And, like, just, and once again, I think they're Slytherin, built up to be. I think Slytherin should be abolished. <laughs> I don't think Slytherin should Which be a house. Is, it, it sucks to say because I actually did Pottermore and I came out of Slytherin. So I'm like, okay, there's got to be some redemption there. Did you take a quiz yet? Did you take a quiz on what house you are? I took that way long, way okay. before this. So what are you? I'm Slytherin. You're Slytherin. Take yeah. it again. I'll take it again. Yeah, you should. Well, like, you should do it on the air. We got time. Okay. But uh, let's talk about. Uh, you want to talk about Snape now? Snape. Okay, We're so that now, right? my yeah, <laughs> my gosh, I I know what you mean. Like, just I love characters like this yeah. so much, where you everyone judges them immediately, but right. turns out like there's so much so deeper substance. Mm-hmm. Um, the scene that really got me, it almost got me choked up, was that again. This is such deep character thought or development. Right, right. Is when um he said, "Why does he hate Harry Potter's father so much? Yeah. Why does he hate him so much? Oh my god, it could, what could be the reason? Because he saved his life." And he knew he couldn't repay that. I'm like, oh my god. He's like, yeah. he didn't want to repay that. Yeah. He didn't want that. He didn't want the burden of repaying yeah. that. I'm like, oh my god. Well, that's like that, that she. She does. There's more to it. But uh-huh. she, she does add very much to it. I'm like, it makes sense. I I, I felt that. Yeah, I was like, right. dang, that's so believable. Because mm-hmm. there are people like that, you know. And you kind of immediately feel like, man, he does actually have the best intentions. Yeah. Just a horrible way of showing it. Yeah. And I felt bad for like judging him, you know, because like, again, it sets you up to judge him, and then it pulls the rug out from under you. Yeah. And I instantly connected with him, and then you get the feeling that he's smarter than pretty much everyone there. <laughs> yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like all he's smarter than any of the professors besides Dumbledore and Hagrid, maybe, but right. like even Hagrid, like yeah, he's really Hagrid's just the brightest bulb in the book. He's really just like <laughs> as far as professors go, yeah. top dog. Like, mm-hmm. and he's not in it for himself. That's another thing. I felt like there's a lot of selfishness, and that's where, you know, Professor Quarrel comes in. You know, the selfishness comes in and takes over. Like, Snape doesn't seem like he's after anything. Right. He's trying, yeah, he screws Potter over, but, like, only because he has, like, a gripe. Yeah. But the gripe comes from a very believable spot. You know, like, oh, my God, his father bailed him out or saved his life one time. It was like, oh, why? Yeah. Oh, I hate you so much. But right. so, no, I love that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, Snape is best girl, hands mm. down. <laughs> like, Absolutely. 
Um, and then, like, in the movie, it's just, like, they pick the perfect guy to play him. So whenever you do get around... I only see him now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So whenever you do get around to watching the movies, you'll be like, okay, like, mm-hmm. the, the, the casting's perfect. Like, yeah, and the voice... I've heard of his voice yeah. as well. Like, it's yeah. really great. The opening scene where they, they're in Snape's class the first time, he's like, mm-hmm. hmm, I guess frame isn't everything. Like, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll hear that straight from the book when you see so, the movie. So, from what I knew before I read this book, I generally thought he was just the obvious bad guy. Right. Like, I was like, okay, he's obviously being signed up for the obvious bad guy. And then I read the book. I'm like, okay. Like, I don't think it's going to be as what Harry thinks, but I'm pretty sure he's going to have some diabolical, diabolical plot. I'm like, oh my God. Like, he's actually a really cool guy. The best thing about it is, like, we don't... She, she's good with mysteries. Yeah, like, we I'm don't, like... We don't know. You like, know he's yeah, way well, more than what appears. Right. And they... Yeah. Don't say anything. Exactly. It's like, well, I've said enough. We're not going to know for it feels like a while, so mm-hmm. we'll see. So, guys, this whole year is going to be dedicated to reading Harry Potter. <laughs> First year, yeah, yeah. kill me. <laughs> oh, sorry, what? I mean, oh, uh, uh, dude, it, I mean, it pains me. I hope, I hope, my my hopeful heart is that you'll find some uh, redemption in your head for this series because i i love it so far yeah. i really like it i hope it gets better well, i want you to know i like the first three books okay i wasn't actually expecting the next one to be chamber of secrets yeah again thought it was gonna be way later but... and no secrets in this chamber <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah. no guns yeah <laughs> They're I, cold I very much enjoy Second book is one of my favorites. Okay, like I'll be honest with you. Okay, I love book two and I love book. I six. heard Prisoner of Azkaban is the best one. Is that true? I can see that. Okay, but my, not my personal favorite. But I know why people like that one a lot. Oh, could you please uh, answer this? Sure. Is it Gryffindor or Gryffindor? Gryffindor. Why? I don't know. Because okay. <laughs> the audiobook is Gryffindor. <laughs> Gryffindor. <laughs> Ten points for Gryffindor. <laughs> oh, I'm so it's Gryffindor. I remember that book. I don't remember because I, I did Audible for books mm. five, book five. Um, mm. Yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, I, I just switched to audio books. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I am dreading getting back to book five. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, but I will. I will tell you in detail why I do not like those. So the The real problems I have with this franchise, mm. they're not that present in this book. Sure. Okay, so. Like I said, when she tries to ramp up the stakes, that's mm-hmm. when it's like, okay, I can see where this is not working out. Yeah. But this book, I think it's a very fine book. It's mm-hmm. a very fine children's book. The the creativity. Oh yeah. The the food. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I would. Oh my gosh! If only I read this as a kid. Like it would change. It would, oh yeah. It would have changed me. Like yeah. legitimately. Yeah. I'm well. I, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're gonna enjoy it for quite a while. So. <laughs> Such a- um, but we should watch the movie off air. <laughs> but like the, the stuff, yeah, I'm down. But mm-hmm. the, the stuff you don't like is the stuff I don't like. I'm, I'm with you. True. Like so it's that's like, what worries me. <laughs> you're right. Exactly. Like I, I'm, I'm with you. Like the stuff mm-hmm. you pointed out as flaws, I definitely think are flaws. Mm-hmm. Like and they only just kind of get worse as time goes on. <laughs> um, there's gonna there's a there's a thing in the second book that she does every time mm-hmm. that annoys the hell out of me. Oh, and you're going to, I'm going to point it out to you. Cause it is, she's, as soon as that next book comes out, she's on it <laughs> as far as putting this in there that I hate. Yeah. And, um, so we'll get to that when I get to book two. Now question, fantastic beast. That's the prequel series, yeah. right? Where they recast the main villain, every movie. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Colin Farrell, Johnny Depp, <laughs> Matt Mickelson. <laughs> um, Snape, Com- Snape's commander. Is that his name? Wait, what? No, not Snape's commander. What's his, what the heck is his name? The main character. Oh, and, and, and I have no clue. I didn't, I didn't read it. Oh, I was okay. good after the seven books. Okay, gotcha. After the seven rings of hell, I was done. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. No, I I think the first book's fine. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, I actually liked it a lot more coming at it from a point of like, okay, this is what it's like to actually be creative. I can appreciate the creativity. Sure. Um, the amount of work. It, like, some of it seems seamless. Like, the... Mm-hmm. The railroad station, yeah, like to just like you got to jump through to get to it. You know, you got to jump through a wall. You, you have know? to run through it. Basically, yeah, it's basically, like, oh yeah. god. Well, okay. Have you been to the Universal Studios at all? No. So to get to Harry Potter World, one of them, you have to do the exact same thing. Really? We missed it. We walked through. No and we're way. Like, Where's Harry Potter World? That's so like, cool. So we did a whole lap around the park, and then I was like, wait. And so then we walked up to a spot where there's a wall. You got to go through the wall and take a right to get to Harry Potter. Oh my gosh, I didn't know. I was that's like, ingenious. I was like, that's pretty smart. Okay, I love you. That. Fooled me the first time, <laughs> so I wasn't even mad at them. That's so, so yeah, cool. uh, the world is fantastic, mm-hmm. and that's why I think you know, a kind of, uh, controversial opinion. Hogwarts Legacy is so good because it's not. It has nothing to do with Harry Potter. It's just focused on no. The world. That's the thing. I want to play the game too. Yeah, uh, re- definitely, really now. But um, like 
Yeah, I always have a problem also when like a franchise is based off of a character. Yeah. Like if they name the franchise, it's like right. calling Star Wars Skywalker. Right. Like that kind of closes Wait, you, you off. Rise of Skywalker is a terrible title. Hmm. <laughs> it kind of closes you off from like exploring anything different. So yeah, I love if you can if like going forward we consider this franchise just the Hogwarts franchise I, or whatever. I, I agree. Like go go do it. Harry Potter is yeah. my least favorite part of the whole series. And <laughs> so that's yeah, I, I don't think at any point I was like, oh god, go for Harry, go Harry. You yeah, know? like I'm no, like, eh. no. I'm much more interested in the other yeah. characters, especially so. Snape. Let's sum up our grievances with the book because I want these to ca- I want these on the record so we can carry them over to the next. Absolutely, books. yeah, yeah. So uh, love triumphing over evil love conquers all. That's the yeah. dumbest thing ever. Bit of weak, uh, bit of bit yeah. weak, bit weak. I don't think Voldemort's a good. At least in this book, we're just going off of this book. I, I'm very upset that he's the big bad. The fact that he's formless, like yeah. physically, I think is telling to his character. Sure. I don't think he's actually legitimately formed. Right, like has form <laughs> right now. Yeah, so like that, that's the usual excuse people go with. Well, he wasn't at his full power yet. And like, it's like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. When he has full power, he actually yeah. died. So yeah, but, yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Harry kind of beats him twice in this book. And he's the big evil bad. So I'm gonna yeah. tell you, I don't. This book, I wasn't impressed with Voldemort. Yeah. Just put it that way. I'm not gonna talk about the later stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about now. I wasn't impressed with him. Okay. Very hyped up. Very whimpery. Yeah. He touched Harry and he died. I was very upset at that. <laughs> what happens this time? Harry touches him. And he yeah. Dies. Right. Right. <laughs> Harry's like Harry's not good at logic puzzles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, huh? Chess? <laughs> Chess? You say? Yeah. So, uh, okay, Harry Potter's the weakest character so yeah. far. His friends and all the other teachers are doing all the work. They're carrying him, and he's the main character. Ron freaking got sm- smacked like, yeah. for Harry. With he was bi- like, yeah, with the right. big chess piece, he's like, I will do this. I'm like, oh my god, this could I kill you. I would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> if you and me were in a chess game for our lives, I wouldn't be like... <laughs> Stop Voldemort's chaps. <laughs> yeah, like, I wouldn't oh do God. that. Like, I'm sorry, buddy. Like, hey, switch spots with me real quick. I'll go fight Voldemort. Yeah, it's he's like... a he's a wussy. Let me go, let's I'll do it. <laughs> transitioning, some awkward transition. Some awkward transition. For some weird reason, for one chapter, Hagrid turns dumb and tells everyone to yeah, split the, up in the, the incompetency of some of the characters yeah. to make the little kids mean smarter. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't. See, that's even a, that's an even better way to put it than what I would have said. Yeah, I didn't really so, like that. Yeah. Um, but again, that's like it's one of those things where it's like, okay, the kids' book is showing. Yeah, let's move exactly. on. Hopefully, the later books grows up. Well, you had bit. you had asked me, do, you know, does, does these, it mature? Do up? these mature? And I was like, well, that's it, was not the, it was a legitimate question. Yeah. Like, that's not the word I would use. But yes. I'm, I'm in, like, I'm I'm okay <laughs> yeah. with it right now if it's just yeah. a kids' book. But like, does it right. get a little bit? And it, it does more grown it, up. It, All right, it does turn young adult at some point. The, mm-hmm. Does the writing get better? You know, I would even say it's like borderline young adult at this point because again, there's a lot of stuff in there. It's like. You would miss as a kid, so. Well, I think that's a good end to this discussion of book one. I hope you all enjoyed that. But, as usual, we always try to include a food, okay? Oh, right. Yeah, so don't worry, Shaps. It's not ranch-flavored ice cream again. It's ranch-flavored soda. (laughs) Uh, Let me go grab it real quick. Give me one sec. All right, Shaps, I have with us, uh, available at any candy store near you, this one I went to downtown Fort Worth. It's called It's Sugar... Yeah, it's just called it sugar. Alright. I got us some butter beers from the Flying Cauldron. These are licensed Harry Potter products. Oh, perfect. Yep, so right here, non alcoholic, uh, Flying Cauldron. I'm sure everyone in our audience has seen these. You'll see the clip on YouTube. Everyone has seen these. It's, you know, 100% natural, gluten free, hmm. straight from the books, butterscotch cream soda. Okay. Uh, I do recommend if you ever go to Universal Studios, get their version of this because it's fantastic and the cream mm. on top is phenomenal. But we can talk about that in another episode. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. There's not much to this. There's nothing to read, really. So, you know, I was about to say going forward, I'm a, I'm the type of person who can be highly critical, mm-hmm. but also really enjoy something, yeah. even if I'm super critical about right. something. Regardless of going forward, how Harry Potter goes, I'm all for the franchise. There you go. I'm glad. Cheers to you enjoying garbage. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. All right. I'm going to open this. Over the twist. How do you feel? How do you feel about looking at it? Is it it pleasing to the eye? I actually do like the way it looks. Yeah. It looks like beer. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And how's this smell for you? It smells really good. It smells like cream soda. Right. I mean, I love cream soda, so. Yep. Well, Shaps, cheers to six more mind-numbing books. <laughs> to Slytherin. <laughs> yeah, to Slytherin. <laughs>
That's really good. That's but, good, isn't it? It's a very strong cream soda. God. I, I, <laughs> quite a lot only of sugar. 31 grams. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good day. I, I actually think it's better for you than Dr. Pepper at this oh, point. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Or diet Dr. Pepper. Good Lord. Yeah, no kidding. I got I cut out all diet sodas, guys. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. I had one the other day, and it tasted disgusting because I had gone so long without it. Then now yeah. it doesn't even appeal Same to me. Same thing happens to soda if you just cut out all soda. I don't think it, that's going to happen. It soda will. is so good. I'm telling you, bro. Um, what do you think, Shaps? you like the flavor? I do, actually. Is it, strong? is it stronger compared to other cream sodas? Sweetness-wise, yeah, but yeah. like I don't mind it. It's sweeter than I remember because I used to be like, ugh, cream soda. But mm. this is actually a lot tastier than I remember it being. So look at that. He's going down. He's he's chugging that thing. Yeah. Well, guys, in the wanna. spirit of Harry Potter, we're going to try to eat some kind of weird item. As far as I know, there's only a few like food items that they really go into, so I'm trying to... I got the, at least the next two books covered. I've heard a lot of people do like parties, watch parties with the movies, and then they actually make like a bunch of snacks. Right. So I was thinking we could... Uh, I don't mind making something or getting something off of Etsy. Mm. So, but they got other stuff that I will unveil later on. Nice. I don't want to blow the load too early. Hold that. So, all right. What do you think? Good time to wrap up discussion. Absolutely. All right. How do you feel as a whole? You really enjoyed the first book. I did. All right. Absolutely. I'm no glad. Regrets. No regrets. That was an easy hour, guys. <laughs> I hate Harry Potter Part One. Didn't really come out in this one, but we'll get to it eventually. But I'm gonna title this series that. So we will see you next time. Hope y'all enjoyed today's discussion. Say bye, chefs. Bye bye. Bye guys. <laughs>